Hello, my name is Chris Gizzi, also known as NTX9 Design. So the Crane Quad looks very similar to the Creality Ender series machines. Uh, it has a number of similar features, such as the uh, it's assembled from V-slot aluminum extrusions. The moving parts are um, roller wheels that move on the V-slots. What sets this particular printer apart from almost everything else on the market is what's called the quad print head. The quad head allows for four separate filaments to be extruded through a single nozzle, and unlike most of the multi-material printers on the market, the quad allows for these materials to be blended together. The M3D company um, developed the quad around the, their 135 stepper motors, which are amazingly small and lightweight motors. The motherboard in the Crane Quad is a Duet Maestro motherboard with an expansion board that allows it to drive all the extra stepper motors needed to extrude four materials. The Maestro board is quite a powerful brain for any 3D printer. So M3D is promoting the quad to be used with their CMYK color calibrated ABSR filament. The concept behind this um, specialty filament makes sense and it is arguably a specialty filament. However, at $22 a roll for these little 250 gram rolls, you end up spending $88 for a, uh, a CMYK set that's only one kilogram of material. So it ends up being about four times the cost of most of the materials on the market these days. What you see printing in the background is actually PLA materials. They're also opaque materials. And the chances are I'm going to see a little bit of what is called the toothpaste effect on my print. This is um, what happens when you blend four materials together using opaque materials is you get what comes out of the nozzle isn't necessarily a perfect blend of the four materials. It actually comes out looking kind of like uh, the old AIM toothpaste as it comes out of the tube where you see each color. And depending on how it gets laid down, one color will tend to dominate over the others depending on the side of the object. The idea behind using semi-transparent materials is you get an optical blending and that should help to mitigate that toothpaste effect. So another topic that I think deserves some attention is the um, Fit for Launch um, campaign that M3D used to promote the Quad Series printers and um, some of the fallout from that. Essentially, it, it was a Kickstarter type campaign to promote the Crane series of printers. The campaign did take longer than I think M3D or a lot of the users expected. Um, the machines were supposed to start rolling out back in August or September of 2018. I believe some of the actual first shipments on the quad were closer to December or January of 2019. And, um, and, and people are frustrated and, and I get that. Now we get into the usability aspect of it. So I received my printer about a week and a half ago. I did a little unboxing video and in the process of unboxing I discovered that one of the cables that connects to the control panel was broken. Um, basically got smushed in shipping. So I had to get a replacement. M3D was actually very prompt in getting a part out to me. So I had the machine down for a couple days while I was waiting for that. Then I loaded up my um, specialty filament and tried to run a print. I'll show you what that looks like. I'm not sure if I got the filament loaded properly because the, um, the magenta didn't come out on that initial print. And what I'll say is it's kind of hard to tell when you first start to use the machine if you're loading it properly or not. I've gone through the procedure a number of times now, kind of got my head wrapped around it. I know what to expect and what to look for. Um, but that initial round of loading filament and testing the machine out is something that there's a little bit of a um, learning curve associated with that. Um, 
I have actually jammed the print head, had to tear it apart. In the process, I managed to break one of the cables that goes to the thermistor and the hot end, had to order a replacement part for that, um, which delayed a few more days before I was able to print again. That came in on Friday, and so um, with the Memorial Day weekend, I've been, um, I built the machine back up and have been running some tests. Um, it seems to be running fine now, and I think I've got the learning curve down as far as loading filament. Um, I am a little concerned, though, in that um, if this thing jams up, it can be a little bit of a problem. Um, what I notice is when you try to feed filament into it, you can't see what's going on inside of the extruder. That's not unusual for extruders, but when you have four filament paths that you're trying to load, it it's a little challenging because if you screw up any one of those, there's the potential that um, that filament doesn't make it all the way into the hot end. And if you don't realize that that's happening, you could potentially back hot molten plastic back up through that pathway and jam up that path on the um, extruder. So um, it's it's something that users need to be aware of is a little bit of a challenge. So while I've been yakking away here, my print is turning into a little bit of a stringy mess. Um, part of that may be that I am using a mix of different filaments that may have uh, different temperatures. I suspect that even though the printer is running at 180, the hot end is running at 180, I think it's possible that the actual point where the filament is mixing might be running a little hot. So I tuned it down to 175. I also backed off on the extruder um, factor or the extrusion factors on all four filaments to about 97 percent. I'm hoping that those um, adjustments will help to reduce the amount of stringing. Um, the one thing I will say is while the um, voxelizer slicer is a pretty amazing tool um, maybe that um, there's opportunities to fine-tune things that I just haven't seen yet. So there you have it. Um, those are my initial impressions on this printer. Um, I'm not quite ready to say whether it's something I would recommend or not. I think I need to spend more time with the machine and um, see how much I, how successful I can be with printing with it. I will say it's not necessarily a machine I would recommend for somebody who has zero experience with 3D printing. It's a little challenging um, and you have to have your loading procedures and so forth really dialed in and you really quite frankly have to be comfortable with pulling apart the, um, the quad extruder and figuring out how to clear jams and so forth. Um, also, one thing that um, I've already had to replace the nozzle and unlike most nozzles that you can get for about a buck these days, this is a $25 nozzle. The reason it's a $25 nozzle is because that's where all the mixing happens. You have four filaments running through a PTFE tube uh, that um, then transitions into a metal um, tube that also has the four filaments and then ultimately gets to the tip where the four colors mix together. Um, unfortunately, M3D has made a decision at this point that they're not going to sell replacement PTFE tubes. I think that they need to reconsider that because it appears to me that that's the part that's most likely to get screwed up or damaged and need to be replaced. I believe the metal parts can probably be cleaned out and reused. Um, that remains to be seen. 
uh, and that is also something I will look into myself over time. Anyway, um, it's printing now. When it completes, I will um, uh, include some. Uh, I will include that item as well as some other test items I've done in this video, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, so these are some examples of prints that I've done on the Crane Quad. This first one is actually a G-code file that comes with the card that comes with the printer. You can see that the magenta color simply didn't print. Again, I think that's my fault. Um, I believe I did not load that color properly in the machine. So these other two examples are from a user by the name of Devin Montes on My Mini Factory. Um, the model is called Chromatic Vase. I did not print this completely as of yet. So the first time I printed it, um, started printing using the color calibrated material from M3D, but then after it started printing, I decided I just didn't quite like the way it was coming out. I actually had mixed too much clear into this. Um, it actually has a very attractive quality about it, but it kind of undermines the illusion of this piece a little too much, so I decided to stop that um, instead of running it all the way through. And then this one um, was what I was running in the background while I was shooting the earlier video. This is a um, all done in opaque PLA. I was having really, really terrible stringing with this and I decided that I need to go back and revisit my um, settings in the slicer program to um, limit that I wasn't able to tune it necessarily while I was running the print. So I think I need to play with my retraction settings to adjust for this. <laughs> 